In this video, we're gonna be going over a new feature inside of Zoho CRM called queries. Uh, queries essentially allow you to make a request either to get data from within Zoho or even from a third-party API, format it, and then add it as a table in a couple different places inside of CRM. Um, so before we jump in, I do want to ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Um, and if you determine that you'd like to get some help in setting up queries or any other functionality across Zoho, just head on over to zanata.com, click on book a meeting, and we'll be talking in no time. So without any further ado, let's jump into CRM. So I've got an account here opened up and we'll see that I have this list of quotes connected to the account. And so what we're gonna do in this tutorial is we're gonna use queries to create a table of quotes that we're gonna add right down here in our canvas view that's only gonna show us quotes that are one, right? Because in the long engagement that you might have with, with a, a particular customer account, it's likely that you've sent many, many quotes most of them they've declined, but a couple of them they've accepted. And so now I wanna be able to see like, hey, what are the actual things that we won with this client outside of having to dig through every single quote that we've ever sent? You'll see use cases for this, like creating filtered lists of contacts, deals, tasks, really anything like that that you wanna surface on top of another record. To get started, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into our settings, and then we're gonna create a query. So it's under our developer hub here in the bottom right. We're gonna add a new query and we're gonna get started. So first thing that we're gonna do is choose the source of where we're gonna get this from. So in our case, we're gonna pull from the CRM. You can structure either pulling from a module or pulling a COQL query if you do wanna write it with SQL. In my case, I'm just gonna use the default structure here and pull directly from the module. We're gonna give this a quote or a name, which is gonna be one quotes in our case. And then we're gonna choose which module we wanna pull from. And so here I'm choosing that I'm gonna pull from that quotes module. Now you'll notice that we haven't specified that we're gonna pull inside of the accounts quite yet. Um, we're gonna do that in just a moment. And so here, what we're gonna do is also pull in as a related module, the account name, because that's where we're going to actually end up showing this data. Here we'll choose what we want to come in as fields that are gonna be relevant as part of this. So for me, maybe I just want like, you know, the number, the subject, the stage, and then the grand total. We can also set up criteria filters. So what we're doing here is essentially adding a filtering statement that will give us a subset of the data that we wanna pull into the table. And so in our case, we're gonna say when the quote stage is closed one, you might also have multiple, right? So I could say if it's confirmed or closed one, we're gonna consider that as a one quote. And so next here, we can move on to the serializer. We're not gonna use this in this case in particular, but what the serializer will allow us to do when you're writing code inside of JavaScript is essentially to reformat some of the data that's inside of those fields into new columns. And so what I'm gonna do real quick is just pull up Zoho's original article so that you can see a good example of how you might actually end up using that. And so here, this is just from their original article kind of announcing this new feature. Um, this is an example where maybe I pulled in some contact information and I've got their full name and I have their designation. Maybe I want my column to display that as one. I kind of want to combine those two things. I can essentially write a little statement here using JavaScript that says, hey, take that and reformat it as full name parentheses designation, right? So we can use this serializer if we do have any data uh, manipulations that we want to do in the interim. Lastly here, we can choose how we want to order these. Um, so this would just be like the sort order essentially that we want to have. So maybe you want to sort these biggest to smallest. Maybe you want to sort them based on the like date as well. So that's that's probably what I would imagine doing. Um, so here I'll go ahead and say we'll sort these by when they were created, um, ascending or descending. Again, just up to you if you want newest to oldest or oldest to newest. So now we'll go ahead and click next. This is just basically it showing you the code that it's doing behind the scenes. Um, here, what we're gonna do is map each of these different fields. So the quote stage being what's been pulled from quotes. We're gonna tell it what type of data this is. 
So for the quote stage, yep, a single line is going to work great. That's like our normal text field. And then we'll give it a label. Now it does a pretty good job at pulling in the labels, makes some good assumptions about like what you would want in your table. Sometimes though, you'll see if you might wanna make a small change to something. So like right now they only support number values for these uh, numericals. Realistically, you might want currency because that'll be supported in the future. Something like quote number, I'm gonna make that a single line. I don't need that to be a long integer. I won't get into the technical reasons, but I just prefer that as a text field. Subject as well, that's just like the name that we gave the quote. So we'll go ahead and click save. And so just like that, now we actually have this query configured. How can we go about using it? So there are two main ways that we can use a query. Um, they can be used either in a kiosk. So like, you know, on my homepage, I have this kiosk where I can run a particular action. So I could actually bake a different type of query that someone could search and select as part of a kiosk flow. In our case here, I'm going to show this from the example that I think is going to be a lot more common, which is essentially adding a custom related list to a canvas view without having to do any coding or, you know, XML or any gross stuff behind the scenes. So to do that, we're just going to jump on into our canvas views. So I'll search up at the top and then we'll open our detailed view for the accounts. I've just pre-created a canvas view here. I pulled a template. I made some space for me to show this example. Of course, your canvases are probably gonna look a lot prettier than mine, um, but I wanted to keep it simple so that we could get this video up for you. Now over here on the left, we've got queries. And so what we're gonna need to do is open up the queries tab and click associate query. We'll give this a name. So maybe we'll call this closed one quotes. We'll choose our source. And just like that, again, you got to be intentional here. If you wrote it in COQL, you'll need to select from that module. Like this one isn't going to show up. But in our case, because I made it as a module query, which again is going to be easier like nine out of 10 times, then now I can pull this in. I can choose if it should be a field or a list. So a query could actually be configured such that you know it's only ever going to pull one value. Now, in my case, I could have many quotes that have been one. So I'm going to show these as a list. Now I can click done and then I can drag this on in. And what we'll see is that now we'll probably want to rename this. So we'll click in to our canvas view and rename it. So I'm just going to do that real quick. All right. So I have just gone ahead and renamed this as our um, one quotes list so that we can differentiate it. Um, here, as you are interacting with these, this is where you'll want to get into some of the nitty gritty around like, do you want to end up adding any additional fields or filters or anything like that so that you can make sure that this is going to show you all the types of information that you need um, for this particular type of data. So let's go ahead and click save though, and just take a look at that example account and make sure that everything is flowing in because here we'll see, I've got three quotes. One of them is one, one of them is pending and one of them has been lost. So if we give this thing a refresh, let's take a look and just make sure that it's pulled in the correct quotes. All right, and so if we scroll down, what we'll see is that it does now only pull in one quote. Now, if I were to go ahead and open up this quote and this one, we should see that they're the same. So here I'll see, this is our quote. It's been created. This is the one that uh, is an actual one quote and the total is 3,100. So you will see a little bit of weirdness as you're first starting to use these, where I can see here that like, unfortunately, while it did pull in the correct quote, it didn't really pull in all the data fields that I care about. So what we may actually want to end up doing is going back into our canvas view and making some adjustments to this template. So here over on the left, if you look at our left hand bar, if I click outside of this little tab and click on queries, it'll only give me the option to add that table again. Right, But if I click into the query and I come back over here, now I have my fields, right? So I could add in the quote stage, I could add in the quote subject. Um, you know, here's where you'd probably wanna like rearrange some of this stuff, like subject probably wants to go on top rather than like at the back end of the list. You know, so we could go in and kind of rearrange these things to make sure that everything is going to look nice and you'll be able to get where you need to go. Another thing you could consider doing is like creating a URL field and pulling that in or even using the sequencer uh, inside of here, the serializer to create that URL using the quote number. But again, if I go ahead and click save 
and then we go back and give this a refresh, we should see that now that formatting has been updated to my new, admittedly quite ugly, as I just kind of quickly put those together, format where you're only seeing that subset of data. So again, keep in mind, these are going to have a lot of use cases over time. Right now, they're only available inside of kiosks and canvas view. In the long run, you'll actually be able to use these in like the default view. So a lot of people just use the standard view for like any particular record. You'll be able to add these as just your normal related list here. Um, you'll also be able to invoke them via API calls. So if you have a certain search that you do all the time with pieces of code, you'll be able to just reference this query value via like a query ID, and then it will give you back that data, which just means you're not writing duplicative code amongst multiple different use cases. So again, I think that'll wrap it up here for today. We did just want to make sure that we got this out for everybody, as I do think that even just the current use case of creating a filtered related list is super useful. Again, we can do this. We've always been able to do this, but it's required a deluge code and a bunch of XML to actually format it into the list, which means like most people aren't going to be able to do it. But with this new method, you'll be able to really easily create that list, drag it right on into your Canvas view, and then you are good to go. So if you did find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. That really does help us out. If it sparks any questions, video requests, um, or any additional clarifications, leave those down in the comments section below that like button as we do try to read and respond to as many of those as possible every single week. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.